Welcome back to Ted's Garage. I'm going to try to get working on the engine this time around. I'll see if I can at least get it to turn over. You know, it's been in storage for two years. Before that, in my other garage, I would uh, leave the crank in there and turn it over uh, you know, every few weeks just to make sure it's still staying loose. Um, you can actually see in one of my previous videos, I, I couldn't find the crank. So I made a crank out of some rebar and a cross pin. And in one of the pictures, you can actually see that, uh, the uh, handmade crank. I finally got a crank. I'm gonna get started on that now. See, where, see what happens with it. The engine, bell housing and transmission, is Ford engine green, but like the brake and clutch levers are black, and a lot of the part, you know, steering columns black, oil fillers black, oil pan is actually black. So you kind of have to know what color it's supposed to be before just going crazy with the green paint or the engine paint. Does it's crank time. Uh, you can see the alignment on the crank there is not really good, it's a little crooked. And these spring mounts down here that the engine sits on sort of pulled back a little bit so but the crank at least lines up good enough I have a problem with my other car where I can't even get the crank in there not locked up. Actually, I could feel, uh, put my thumb on the spark plug holes, coming up on compression, the, the holes when it's supposed to be on the power stroke. You know, and that's when both valves are closed and it's going down, but it'll actually suck then. And then uh, it's harder to tell when the uh, intake and exhaust valves are open. So I could take the side cover off here and see what they're looking like. Uh, let's see, uh, a little bit rusty on the inside there, which being a oil pan, it should be a uh, 
if it's pumping or okay. not. See if I can show you the uh, valve chamber. So in there, you can see the rust, and uh, you can also see the the ports. Actually, the ports are looking really clean. And I can see the the valves right in there and they actually look really nice but this valve chamber is just horrible i probably really need to pull the uh let see where i cleaned out somewhat let's see what it looks like when i spin it over and uh the valves are moving. Okay, I'm going to crank the engine over to see the valves operating. of them opening and closing. And up front here, you'll see oil come out right here. Well, if you could see it oozing out, it's filling that little chamber up with oil. You have to stop because it's about to overflow. But if the side cover was on, it would fill up to that amount and then start flowing over into this area and flow on down and there's some return passages where it drains back down into the oil pan but that's how the lubrication system works is this will fill up to about one cup or so then it flows it flows so this is the valve chamber on the model a and you can see the uh, lifters right this is the cam gear and the camshaft goes down through the engine block right about there. And the lifters sit on them in these little shafts. And that right there is the lifter, lifter, lifter. And that's the valve stem sticking down, sitting on the lifter and the valve springs. So you'd have to uh, take the head off and uh, disconnect the, the valve, compress the springs here and release the retainer on the end of the valve. And take the valves out. And then from the top, you polish and grind the valves and then put it back in. And since you've lowered the clearance on the valve and the, the block, you may have to adjust the, the length of the valve stem. Well, the only way to do it originally is you take it to a grinder against the grinder, stick it in there and make sure that the valve is seating completely. Trial and error, keep doing that back and forth until you grind enough off the end of the valve stem. And even if you put new valves in, they're a little bit long and then you have to take it to the grinder until they seat correctly in the engine block. You know, they don't go in the head, they go in the engine block. You do that for each one of these. And this is actually the distributor shaft that's going down, connected to the camshaft, and then it continues down to the oil pump. And you can see this is the oil pump retainer that screws it. You screw it in to hold the oil pump when you're taking the pan off so that it doesn't drop. And uh, then you unscrew it to... Uh, during normal operation. But that's basically what the, what it looks like in there. And I got it pretty clean. I guess you can kind of see, you know, there's, it's pretty clean for the hard part to get to. As you can see back there, that little, um, I think it's the center main cap bolt, but you know, it's kind of hard to see back in there. And on the other side of the engine, you can see 
It's a little cleaner and painted up, but there's another bolt right there with a cotter pin in it. You can actually adjust the tap it. If you go like, Mike's affordable, Mike's uh, affordable.com for his uh, model A vendor parts. They have them where you can get the adjustable kit. So I think that's about it for today. Get the engine to crank over and uh, actually pumps oil up, so that's nice. And we took the side oil cover pan off and you can see lots of rust in there. So I cleaned it up, scraped it out and put some rust stopper in there. And the side oil pan cover was very rusty, which looks like that. Sanded it really good, put some rust stopper on it too. And don't forget, still on the gas tank. I sloshed it back and forth. We'll see about uh, looking inside there maybe next time. And I'll just let it keep soaking. So, all right. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care.